Now, if you're a regular viewer on the channel, you've seen me play Diesel Railcar Simulator many, many times. It's a game I enjoy. It's set in the 1960s. It's got, it's pretty easy to control. It's got uh, short routes to drive and it's very YouTube friendly. Over the last couple of months, the dev has uh, been updating the graphics of the, uh, of the game. Thus far, he's got two out of the three main routes, which are including the game done, and he's made them into a beta. So today we're going to look at those and comparison what they were, the graphics and what they are. If you've not heard of Diesel Railcar Simulator, it is, as it's uh, well, described here, drive vintage diesel trains shifting gears manually and trying to reach a perfect score, create new routes, trains and timetables, share your creations and download new content for the workshop. So yeah, it's a great little game. To view new the graphics, you'll need to install the beta. To do that, uh, head to the game page. After you obviously uh, purchase the game, click on the Manage icon, click on Properties, click down the betas, choose your beta testing, close this, and then you'll see it reinstall, and in a second you'll have access to it. Right now, we have the Mountain Pass and we have North London to actually look at. Uh, Westfords isn't uh, available yet. So what we're going to do, we are going to load up uh, the Mountain View Pass first, and then we'll take a, a look at both the new and the old graphics, and then we'll do the same with North London. So here we are. There's two ways we're going to view the differences. Firstly, we're going to full screen swap between the current and beta graphics footage, and later on, we're going to place the two films next to each other. Hopefully, using these methods, all the good and some of the not so good will come through in the video. It should be remembered, though, that the new graphics and other changes are in the beta stage, and so anything and everything could get changed and improved. Now, the first thing you're likely going to notice is the lighting. It's very different, far colder, less yellow, which is more appropriate for the UK. The weather here isn't really hot very often. The colour reminds me of the way the train simulator renders its routes, which is not a bad thing. The next thing you'll likely notice are the level of details and the complexity of the scenes are increased. It looks more believable, but it doesn't go overboard. It would have been very easy to place too many assets, which would have lowered the FPS and thus made it unplayable. When making the videos, I also noticed the map itself has been updated. Where there might have been a straight on the original map, there's now a turn, and we now have tunnels. The town locations seem to be in the same location, and the entrances and exits to them are basically in the same place, but the bits in between can look very different in places. The towns, as you can see from this station, are also very different. This town was originally on both sides and looked quite large, but it's only on the single side now. We're meant to be driving along a rural route, and I think the change is made to emphasise the fact that you're in the middle of nowhere. The assets of the buildings have all been updated here to make you feel... Well, it just feels a little more countryside. One of the biggest graphical elements that let down the game originally was the bare ground textures next to the track. You would see very harsh green shapes that looked like very harsh green shapes whilst driving along. The updated graphics seem to have smoothed these out. And on top of this, the map now has moving grass covering up these areas. Now this is a vast improvement. This helps the game tremendously. Placing the footage next to each other like this shows off everything I've just mentioned. There's now no bridge where there was. The track has improved, there's now foliage to the left and an improved hill to the right. It looks like a totally new map. The only thing the same here is the away signal on the left. Once again, we're heading to a station. You'll notice the track layout is straight. It's very similar on both sides. But the scene is very, very different. It's much more rural once again. Gone are the red brick footbridge and station and now a much more sort of raw stone building with uh, a metal uh, bridge going over the top. It's far more open with less foliage. The hills are less jaggedy to the right, um, and you can see the stone cottages also. The hills are the same, they are more brown now rather than the green colour they were before. 
The scenery is still quite simple. It's actually less jaggedy than it was before. It's flatter than it was before, but, uh, but because you have houses on one side, you don't need anything behind that because you're not really looking that side. On the other side where there is no house, on the left-hand side, you've got this field of, was it wheat, I suppose, which is used on the majority of the map. And you'll notice on the next map as well, it's quite simple, but the wheat's moving just like the grass is. So it does keep, it gives an, an eye a feeling, I suppose, a feeling of um, complexity where there really doesn't have to be any, and there, there isn't any. On the old map, look at the points direction. It's going the wrong way. Not a massive thing, it's just something I notice as I, I have to replay this film multiple times as I make the video. Now coming up to here, you're going to notice the first tunnel. Is it the first tunnel? I think it is. Um, there are a few graphical issues as you go through it, but again, remember this is a beta and there's no reason that can't be uh, fixed as uh, it goes along. It's actually quite difficult matching up the video in places because the, the route has changed so much. I was thinking, I was wondering where on earth am I? Am, am I at the right place? What I ended up doing was going along to the next station. So I try and match the distance on the two maps and hope that they would actually be the same. But again, I'm driving it manually here, so the, the speed don't go is different. So there are going to be a few little differences of where we are, but generally, the differences you're seeing here are because the map is actually different. Isn't it amazing how a little bit of wall and a bit of foliage makes that slope to the right look so much nicer? The problem before was the textures. If you look at that slope, it just doesn't look real. And you can place a few different colours onto it. The track also looks like it's floating slightly. It's a low poly sort of track. But uh, I think the biggest thing here is the actual the moving foliage and, the, and that uh, stone wall there, which is, really does make it pop. Now, I also like the lakes they've added in. Um, it's a good focal point. You're looking down below the bridge. It's just something to go, oh, that's nice. We're now very close to the next station, and that's where we're going to leave it for this route. After that, we're going to head to the uh, North Landon route, which is uh, the rural stopping up we're going to take a look at. I think on the next route, what we'll do is look at, uh, well, the downside, the, the big downside of actually adding the extra assets in. And uh, I think we'll read out, uh, read out what the dev has written, what he actually wants to add into the game, because uh, it, it is still, I think, early access to this game, and it's, uh, it's still being worked on actively, which obviously, as you can see here, but he wants to add other stuff in as well. And as you can see from this station, he's made it very similar uh, to the other two. Um, very rural. The, uh, the new kind of houses, the new sort of stone brick houses, uh, grass everywhere. It does feel very much more out in the outback somewhere. So now we're on to North Landon rules stopping up. Now you're going to notice the graphics are very, very similar. Um, the assets, again, very, very similar, but it is a different, actually a totally different map. There are three maps with the game, two at the moment in the beta stage and the new graphics but uh, they are using very similar assets. But again, the original version of the graphics did the same thing, but it's just updated and they're better quality. Now this map, like the other one, is a very raw looking map. So at the end of the video, I've added in some footage of a suburban uh, map. It's uh, North Landed again, this map, but in a different area. Uh, suburban stopping down. So you can see what sort of a town area will look like as well. So let's talk about the negatives so far, and that is going to be FPS. Now, you've probably seen the uh, the new footage is a lot more jittery, it's sort of stop, start, sort of start. That's because the FPS is a lot lower. On the current, or the old graphics, I was getting 60 FPS easily. On the new graphics, I get um, 30, on the lowest is 20 FPS. 
Now, going through the form, you, again, you must remember this is a beta, and so there's, there is time for it to be improved. Um, but he, he does recognise that there are issues, and uh, looking at this, you know, the notes he's written, the dev has written, that he is looking at trying to try and improve the FPS. We're just going to have to see how much that is. But it's always going to be the case that if you put more assets in the game or in the frame which you're looking at, the FPS is going to go down. So we just got to see how much better he can make it. But uh, fingers crossed, there's a few more FPS in there to be uh, to got back. Now the map here is actually a little bit better. Um, I haven't shown all the footage, but there's a lot more undulation and turning getting to this station because we've obviously come out to a station again. But along that segment there. Um, I was trying to hold a speed and it was difficult because it was going down and up and that's it actually makes the game plan a little bit better so that was good. Now another negative I suppose we could add on is the, the graphics are a little bit samey. Um, this is the North London map and what we looked at before was the Mountain Pass map. They're not just different areas of the same map, they are completely different maps. Now, I'm okay with the assets being very similar because you have to make assets or you have to buy in assets. So using the same ones, I think that's fair enough, personally. But it's how you use them. And we come to a station again and it looks very similar to the previous map. Whereas there was a town before and now the town has gone, basically. We, were, we are in the middle of nowhere. Now, it, both of these maps are, sim are similar in that they are both rural but um, surely some areas of the of rural areas are going to have towns in. So they all have to be like this, exactly the same? I don't know. I, don't, this, I haven't gone through all of the maps yet. I haven't gone all through all, through, all of the timetables. and gone. Th so I don't know if all of it's like this. It's just an observation for what I have looked at thus far. late to the right there. Um, it's not to be details on it, it seems to have some reflections of the tree, the three trees there. Um, but it is something to look at, which is uh, which is quite nice. Now I'll read you what the dev has written about uh, the update. Uh, it says graphical issues you might encounter, level of details, lot issues. Some objects may look deformed or broken until they get close to camera. Some objects may be missing textures or the texture might look simplistic or poorly aligned. Some parts of the routes might appear undeveloped. Uh, cities in North London. Okay. Cities in North London. Okay. Because of problems in the automatic placement of buildings. Things still needed to be done before official release. Upgrading Westford's route. Now we discussed this, that route's not there yet. Fixing graphical issues, optimizing frame rate and memory use, other fixes and improvements unrelated to graphics and scenery. Now thinking about it, I don't think he means the, the villages we're passing through on this, uh, I'm not saying map, on this um, timetable. I think he means the actual city. Now on the next presentation, the last bit of this video, we're going to look at um, a rural route, so a city route. So same, same North London, but a different area within, within the city. Um, I'm pretty sure he probably means buildings there. They looked fine to me. Um, I did have a look around off video, just uh, and they seem to be there. Um, FPS obviously does need to be looked at. Um, again, I don't know what we can do about it. We'll have to see, won't we? So we're coming up to the uh, the final station, which we're going to look at on this timetable. Then we're going to move over to the rural um, timetable on the same map. Um, we, again, what you've noticed, we mentioned this before, but as we get near to the village, the alignments of the track become very similar because it's he can change it in between on the in between bits and move it around how he wants it. But when you get unless he wants to move all the villages and the stations and things, he probably has to keep the alignment fairly close. Um, some graphical updates again with a bridge and uh, 
and the various other things, but basically the alignment is the same. And finally, we're going to look at the Suburban Stopping Down, which is again on the North London map, but it's very different to what we've looked at before. There are very rural areas. This is a suburban area. Um, so this is the other end of the map. It's got the big station here, which is very different to how it was before, and lots and lots of buildings. So let's have a look. Now, this is the sort of area I think he means when he's talking about the uh, updating the assets for the buildings in this sort of area of the map. I don't remember before there actually been any sort of town buildings. I think they were all the same before. All the stations were the same before, but they were just bigger areas. So uh, I think what he's doing is actually just making you know, larger sort of city buildings for the uh, the area so hopefully this is making a larger variety of them now looking at the forum page on the planned updates he's put scenery better terrain textures now we talked about those fields and denser forests grass and bushes more realistic roads better fences i think that's this update actually more houses building models so a bigger range of stuff now that would be good more realistic and detailed track models uneven track 3d models to match rails to wheel movements Okay, so this is one of the best games for which you wall movements and the suspension of the games, if the suspension of the uh, the units, really do have a, a feeling of movement. So if he can actually put the, a bit of track, so the track's very flat at the moment, so if he is able to actually make it undulate left and right, it, yeah, tunnels, yeah, fantastic, he's added those in already. So career, um, he's got a great game mode, career mode, steam leaderboards, steam achievements, improved score, and chaining services to make multiple runs with the same train in one session conventional tutorials yeah. there we go advanced night lighting At the moment there's no lights on the train so um train headlights manually controlled cabin interior lights manually controlled scenery lighting building etc so that would be on and off depending on the time of the day signaling uh, night lighting again yes uh, more realistic signal placement, more signal models, custom signals, uh, signal systems, workshop support for uh, custom signal systems. He already does have workshops, so there are maps. You saw them at the beginning. Uh, the other maps on on the game, which I have, were were mods. Physics, diesel, electric traction. Oh, okay. Proper run ending procedure. Stop it. stopping engines, applying handbrake, removing a set key, etc. Okay, because the moment you just stop and press escape, and that's it. It tells you a score. Train failures. Oh, derailments. That would be good. Derailments. You go too fast. Environment. Prerequisite. Uh, prerequisite uh, physics update. Uh, weather effects. Automatically generated four seasons. Oh, that would be quite good. Uh, Distal elevation map support for route editor. Uh, open street support. So you can oh, open maps. You can make a map using open street uh, map. That'd be great. Open street. If you don't know that, is uh, like Google Maps, but it's, it's free. So they don't track you or those sort of things. It does have a few issues. Open street map, but it's you know it's a very good alternative. Um, other necessary changes to the route editor. I know one which uh, I've asked him to do, which is. If you're looking downwards and you press forward, I don't want it to go towards the earth. He's not done that one yet. I've asked him to do this because uh, I would like to make a map, but that bothers me. When you, when I'm looking down and push forward, I want to go forward, but stay the same height. Ah, uh, yes, well, there's lots more on there. So remember, that's his wish list. Um, he's written this on the form page and things he'd actually like. Well, let's see what gets in and what doesn't. So that would be, uh, hopefully, the more the merrier, eh? So that's the end of the video. We've taken a look at two raw routes and, suburb and this suburban route. Um, they are a big improvement. Um, they are beta, as I've said. Hopefully uh, some FPS will be gained back on them, but uh, they are very good. I do like them. Um, hopefully you did as well. And uh, well, if you did, uh, I'll leave the uh, link to the game in the description, all those sort of things you can go and uh, check it out yourself. OK, guys, thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button. If you want to see more, please subscribe and press that ding dong bell button. You know what it does. See you next time. Bye, see bye.